Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And we're following breaking news connected to the Larry Nassar abuse scandal. Michigan prosecutors filed charges against former owner of Twice Stars Gymnastics, John Geddert. The former U.S. Olympics gymnastics coach had ties to the disgraced sports doctor. Getter was head coach of the 2012 U.S. Women's Olympic Gymnastics team, which did win a gold medal. Larry Nasser was the team's doctor and also treated gymnasts there. Let's go live now to Local Force Grant Herms. He joins us with more on what we know about these charges, Grant. Uh, Farad, these charges came down within the last hour here. There are two dozen of them, and many of them are carrying decades in prison time. Now, according to these charging documents that were filed in Eaton County, Getter is facing 20 counts of human trafficking, five of those allegedly involving a minor. The charges carrying 15 to 20 years in prison each. He's also been charged with two counts of criminal sexual assault and one count each of racketeering and lying to law enforcement. According to the documents, Getter lied about the scope of Nasser's work with the Twist Stars gym. In all, Geddert is facing a maximum of 350 years in prison. Now, Geddert has repeatedly said he had no knowledge of the crimes Nasser was committing while working as a doctor at Twist Stars in Lansing, where he was also the 2012 national gymnastic team's doctor. At Nasser's sentencing, the prosecutor read an anonymous survivor's account that Geddert had knowledge of Nasser's crimes dating back to the 1990s. Nasser is currently serving 40 to 175 years in prison. Now there is a press conference today at one o'clock. So in just about an hour where we expect to hear from Attorney General Dana Nessel. We'll have an update on that online and this evening at five o'clock. Back to you, Everett. All right. Thank you, Grant. We'll have much more information later today. Thank you for the update. In other news, Wayne County leaders are calling it a game changer. The county just held a press conference at the Dickerson facility over in Hamtramck to unveil new tech that aims to stop the threat of COVID at jails. Local force Victor Williams joins us now live this afternoon. And Victor, how does this all work? Well, it all works with them trying to target the COVID-19 particles that may be in the air, but they just discussed all of this at a recent press conference. And Wayne County jail officials, just like you said, are really calling this uh, absolute game changer. Now, just an hour ago, it was announced that the jail acquired this new groundbreaking technology that will eliminate COVID-19 and other airborne particles that can cause people to become ill. In fact, they're saying that this technology is so groundbreaking that it can serve as an example that other agencies can follow as well and this includes schools and hospitals so there is a lot of faith being put into this new system that they have in place at the Wayne County Jail. Now just moments ago like we said all of this was discussed at a press conference with higher ups in the jail and Sheriff Raphael Washington spoke on the impact that will now be made. We're going to attack COVID where it lurks in the air. And the technology we've acquired from IVP is groundbreaking. We are the first correctional facility in the nation to install this equipment, which is proven to catch and kill the virus causing COVID. That's a game changer. And we're going to be going into more detail on this technology coming up later on tonight. For now, we are reporting live from the Wayne County Jail, Victor Williams, Local 4. All right, Victor, thank you. Now let's get you updated on your coronavirus headlines. Governor Whitmer has announced changes to restrictions could be coming very soon. She says that the gathering limits could be eased in the next few days, while an announcement about nursing home restrictions could come next week. But this all comes as Michigan reports 1,245 additional cases of COVID-19 and nine more deaths. There are now 314 confirmed cases of the UK coronavirus variant here in our state. And Detroit is asking for anyone 55 and older who can to drive a, a Detroit senior to the TCF Center for them to get the vaccine. And you can even get the vaccine for yourself. It does not matter where you live. On the national front now, average daily COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and deaths from COVID are all down over the past week. And the Biden administration says vaccine distribution has increased 70% since the president took office. Now, despite that, demand still far outweighs supply, but... We could see a big boost with this third vaccine option coming from Johnson & Johnson, potentially hitting the market sometime next week. Here's Tom Costello with more. 
developing overnight. The New York Times reports two new studies have found a new strain of the COVID virus is spreading rapidly in New York City. The problem, that variant potentially has the ability to weaken the effectiveness of current vaccines. The Times says neither study has been vetted by peer review nor published in a scientific journal, but the results are consistent. Meanwhile, the FDA is poised to give emergency approval to a new vaccine. The agency staff endorsing Johnson & Johnson's vaccine ahead of an emergency use hearing Friday with the FDA's independent advisory panel called VERBPAC. If the EUA is granted, we will waste no time getting this life-saving vaccine into the arms of Americans. If approved, Johnson & Johnson's candidate would become the third vaccine available to the public. Data released by the company shows its vaccine to be 72% effective in the United States at preventing moderate and severe disease. That's lower than Moderna and Pfizer's 95% rating, but Johnson & Johnson's vaccine requires just one shot and can be stored in a regular refrigerator. Trials also found it to be 100% effective in preventing COVID-related hospitalizations and death. Deaths. Meanwhile, Moderna has updated its vaccine formula to target virus variants found in the UK and South Africa. That new formula now shipped to the NIH for study. Moderna's president urging Americans to get any shot that becomes available. Any vaccine is better than no vaccine, particularly if it's been reviewed by the FDA and recommended by the CDC. In an exclusive interview, the head of Pfizer tells NBC's Lester Holt his company is going to start studying the effectiveness of a booster, potentially adding a third shot to its two-dose vaccine. Is your expectation that uh, this will turn into a routine three-dose vaccine? A likely scenario is that we will not have a three-dose vaccine. We will have an annual revaccination, likely with one dose of uh, the vaccine. One more note on the Pfizer vaccine. They're now going to start testing their vaccine on children ages 5 to 16 to see how well they tolerate the vaccine and how much protection the vaccine affords them. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Thank you, Tom. Let's switch gears a little bit now and talk about this Detroit firefighter who is accused of driving drunk in a rescue engine and hitting a car. Sources tell us here at Local 4 that members of Squad 6 were on duty and drove the engine to a party. Now, we're told that they took a call for sick patients and hit a car when they arrived. A supervisor took the firefighter for a drug and alcohol test, and on Wednesday, it was confirmed that that firefighter was drunk. We know that one firefighter consumed alcohol. We have proof of that. Uh, in order to make further determinations, we're going to have to complete the investigation and follow the facts where they lead us. Like all first responders, we're outraged that someone would consume alcohol and drive an emergency response vehicle. Well, that firefighter has since been suspended and the case has been turned over to the Detroit Police Department. Of course, we'll continue to follow this story for you. We'll have much more coming up on Local 4 News at 6. Meanwhile, firefighters in Brownstown Township now are investigating what caused a Dollar General store to burn to the ground. This was the scene earlier this morning on Telegraph near Sibley. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but the business, as you can tell, was destroyed. The fire started outside of the building, but it quickly spread to the attic. Firefighters tell us that it could have been a lot worse. Next to the family dollar store is a tattoo shop. It suffered some water damage, obviously, from the, the heavy exterior water streams we put on this uh, fire. Other than that, uh, like I said, if that wall would have failed or if that wall wasn't intact, uh, we could still be fighting heavy fire in that attic space all the way down the strip mall. Now we're told this same Dollar General actually caught fire two years ago, but somebody spotted the flames early. Farmington police are investigating after shots rang out at a local zap zone. This happened around 8 o'clock last night at the location near Grand River and Orchard Lake. It's believed that this all started as an argument between two groups. Police are telling us that it's unclear after reviewing surveillance video uh, that the intended victim was targeted. No victims have come forward and none have been located. And Detroit police now are investigating a deadly shooting on the city's west side. This one happened around 5 this morning at the home at a home on Lenore right near Telegraph Road. Officers found the man shot in his driveway. The victim was taken to the hospital where he died. It's unclear what led up to that shooting. Well, let's get you updated on your forecast on this Friday Eve as we take a beautiful look at our uh, Detroit city here. Meteorologist Brandon Roo standing by. We've had uh, some pretty nice days these past couple of days here, hoping to at least repeat some of that in the weeks to come. 
53 degrees yesterday. I mean, exceeded expectations. Never care about being a little bit off on the forecast when those numbers exceed expectations. And once again, looking downtown, can you believe 30, 34, 35 days from now, it's going to be the Tigers and the Indians at Comerica Park? April 1st, yeah. 37 degrees right now, tough baseball weather. 37 Monroe, it's 30 Port Huron, 35 in Ann Arbor. It's a little bit of a, a northwest breeze becoming southwest, but it does knock the wind chills into the 20s and lower 30s. Just make sure you're prepared for that. It's not a real strong wind. We're going to see temps near 40, feeling a little cooler, but after a taste of 50, well, don't want to give that away yet. Here we go. We're, we're looking at the satellite and radar picture, a little jump in the computer, but we're looking for 50-ish again in the weekend forecast. Evrod, coming up. All right, Brandon, we'll check in with him shortly. Still ahead here on Local 4 News at noon, a new law aimed at social media platforms. Coming up, how Australia is making Facebook and Google pay for news content. But first, more protests coming from Myanmar. Up next, what demonstrators are demanding.